Welcome back to Line Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander, and today's episode is brought to you by uh, my book that is coming out December 24th, 2019. Uh, it has been the primary project that I have been working on for the last two years, and uh, I'm so immensely grateful and excited to share it with you guys. It's published by Hachette, and it represents the last five years of this podcast and 16 years of working with clients. And uh, it's all the golden nuggets that I've encountered in that time wrapped up into one book that's broken down in simplistic terms that any sixth grader could understand. So it breaks down how to align your home, your office, your travel, your environment so that your existence makes you move and think better. Uh, Gets into the fundamental mechanics that every person ought to have. Uh, that is consistent in any martial arts practice or dance or weightlifting or yoga. Uh, We can integrate those principles into our daily lives to make it something that we are as opposed to something that we do and uh, so much more. So I'm really grateful grateful for you guys' support on that and uh, you can grab it on Amazon. Uh, Just look up The Align Method uh, or you can go to thealignbook.com and on there you will also get some fun bonuses along with your purchase. So thank you guys so much for supporting that. It is absolutely 100% my proudest thing that I have ever birthed into this world uh, or been involved in birthing I should say and uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys think. Um, Thank you guys so much and here we go, podcast episode. Uh, What we got today is Dr. Ganoom. Uh, Dr. Ganoom is one of the absolute most intelligent humans that I have come in contact with. He is literally the guy that uh, created the term or began the exploration into looking at the mycobiome. So we hear about the microbiome and the gut biome and all the the biomes, but uh, we don't think about the fungus inside of our bodies. And that is exactly what we get into this conversation. What does that mean? Why does that matter? How can we start to cultivate and gain relationship with these sweet fungi operating our systems? Uh, really great conversation. I think you guys, we're going to really love it. Um, thanks so much for tuning in the website, alignpodcast.com, and starting the five-day movement challenge, uh, alignpodcast.com, on there. Start that thing and start integrating more effective movement into each and every moment of your life there are consistent principles of good movement that we learn in dance or martial arts or weightlifting that we can start to utilize in our daily lives and that is the fountain of youth we start incorporating more effective movement into our lives then uh, we become whoa i heard a little beeping oh well that's okay we'll just keep going um yeah so i think you guys are gonna love that and uh thanks again so much for tuning in uh final thing is we are brought to you here today by Organifi. Organifi is absolutely one of my favorite supplements that I have in my cabinet. Um, They have a whole plethora of organic, uh, vegan, uh, soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, USDA organic, all the stuff, um, powders of goodness, including what I'm holding in my hands right now, which may be my favorite, you can hear it, uh, is the turmeric and reishi infused gold. Uh, gently dr- dried superfood tea. Uh, excellent stuff. It contains pretty much all of the anti-inflammatory goodnesses that you could possibly want in a single powder. Um, it's I'm reading off some of the stuff. It's got turmeric, lemon balm, our certified organic turkey tail, magnesium, uh, all the good stuff. I use this in tea, especially before bed, also in the morning. Uh, it's helpful with creating a little more spaciousness in these joints. And um, it also tastes really delicious. So highly recommend that you guys can get yourself a discount by going to Organifi.com, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, and then use the align code and you will get 15% discount on that purchase. All right. Thank you guys so much for grabbing the book. Thank you so much for grabbing that Organifi deliciousness. And I think you guys are going to devour this conversation with Dr. Ganoom. He's got his book out. I'm holding that book right now, too. Uh, the Total Gut Balance. Fix your microbiome fast for complete digestive wellness. Dr. Ganoom. He has one of the sweetest souls of any of the humans that I have gotten into contact on this podcast. So I think you guys are going to really love it. And uh, here we go. Back to the show with Dr. Ganoom. 
Online Podcast. I'm so glad about this. You don't know how glad I am because this is so unusual. <laughs> we got to get you some tea. Oh, great. That's of, of great value. It's just like a hammam. It really like hammam. It's I, the old, we're going old am, school. We're going old school here today. I am really so surprised that you you went to Morocco. You lived in Morocco and you know hammams and the Turkish bath. I told you when I was little little boy, my dad all the time used to take me to Turkish bath. Yeah. A hammam, you know. And the hammam was, had, in addition to the steam room that they had, they really did not have sauna. They had a steam room. And the steam room, and then you go out, you have people with, you know, when you have like, uh, they clean you with this, uh, uh, it's loofah type of thing, mm -hmm. where it, it, it really, when they clean you, your skin becomes unbelievable. Yeah. And then after we finish, you go and sit in the, a huge place and they wrap you with old Turkish towels okay and tea of course right they bring so it's and then you are all wrapped and so so lovely we I used to go like uh, with my dad every maybe month one and one and a half months I go and so them it yeah. was fun I'd be interested how that affects the uh, working with the skin what's the the, the the skin biome like and the fungus on the yes. skin how's, yeah. how's the relationship with that I, I think, uh, if you think about it, the skin, of course, we have both bacteria and fungus in the skin. And we did uh, studies recently just to look at the psoriasis and atopic dermatitis and to, s to identify what is there compared to the control. But with respect to going to having a steam uh, bath or, or sauna for that matter, what you are doing, you really you are cleansing uh, uh, your body, you know? Uh, and I think you are going to have less and less fat and uh, lipids on mm. the body because of the, you know, you are being uh, perspiring, uh, a lot of it is cleaned, and that may reduce the amount of a fungus called melasesia, which spread all over our body. So to h I think it's very uh, helpful to, to do that because even though it is there present normally on the skin, as long as it's not in high numbers, it's not gonna go cause an issue. So in this way, I would say steam, bath, as well as sauna will, is very beneficial. Mm. Because remember, with fungus in particular, if you have areas in your body which is wet and damp, like you, the shoes, the best example, you know, you have a shoe which is very tight and in the summer, it becomes a humid and fungus love the humidity there. That's why having a sauna, having a good bath and drying yourself very well is very helpful. How does the fungus or the, is it called the mycobiome? Mycobiome. How does that affect the way that we think and we feel and emotions and? There are studies which show that there is communication between our gut as well as our brain, yeah. our brain, the like gut brain gut access, brain. Yeah. you know, and fungi seem to have to have uh, to play a role with respect. If you have imbalance, for example, you have a lot of candida in your gut, it will influence other organisms which are producing good metabolites or small molecules that could really sort of improve the communication between the the, uh, the brain and the gut. Mm. So having a reduction of the bacteria because of the overgrowth of fungi, it's going to affect your mood because you, it's going to affect your serotonin and then you are going to have issues. I always wonder whether these things are chicken and the egg, whether, you know, so there's all the research of, you know, having this microbe or pathogen or parasite or bacteria, whatever makes you feel a certain way. Could it be also the other direction that by feeling a certain way, you could be uh, become like a host, a more susceptible host to those things. No doubt about it. I think it's bidirectional. Yeah. If you have a gut issue, you are going to affect your brain. But also if we have stress, for example, yeah. okay, which really starts with the brain pushing down, you know, molecules to your gut, you are going to have also issues. Mm. So it's what's the best way is to try to balance this not only with respect to the microbiome, but also your uh, lifestyle. Mm. You know, you have to sleep better. You have to have less stress. You have to exercise, like 
like you do. Yeah. You know, because the more you do that, the more you will help whatever diet you are taking. What's your story? What's your interest with this? What's the root of all the interest in the whole fungal world? Fungal. You know, this is a good question. I started studying fungus when I was in England in 1974. So mm. I went to do my doctorate there. I finished at American University of Beirut, my bachelor, and then went to England. And in the summer, the mentor there, he gave me a paper, published paper, where it showed that a rabbit that is treated with an antibiotic, guess what happened? They become more prone or more susceptible to fungal infection. Yeah. So at that time, my project was, what is the effect of antibiotics and the steroids on candida? Mm -hmm. That's how I started, okay? And over the years, I kept working with uh, understanding fungus. Now, come forward to the 21st century, when people start talking about the microbiome, I went to meetings and everybody only talking about bacteria. I said, no, 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 we should also look at the fungus. And that's when in 2010, I wrote an opinion piece saying, we need to look at both bacteria and fungus in our body, okay? And I called it the mycobiome. That's where I coined the term myco for the fungal community. And showed them, I told them the story about the, the rabbit, <laughs> you know, were you treated with this? And this is what's gonna happen. And then what really brought me in is when we started looking at Crohn's disease patients. Mm. And we looked at both bacteria and fungus and we showed that they both imbalanced. You have an increase in candida, especially one specific species called Tropicalis, an increase in two bacteria, E. coli and Cirrhotia, marcissans, which are pathogen. Mm. Not only there is increase, but also we showed that they work together. And that's where the whole interest in the gut microbiome and the uh, how to try to rebalance it started. So how does one isolate their mycobiome? As before you came over, I was reading about mycoforestry, how they're, they're yes. adding various different fungi into the forest to, sure. to rebalance things like sure. permaculture for the forest. Yeah. yeah. How does one do that in their own, in their own selves? In, in your own selves, you can do it two ways. You do it through the diet, you can do it through probiotic. Also, you can improve the situation by the lifestyle. But ba basically, the diet play a very big role in which organism you are gonna encourage. Mm. If you take too much sugar, candida, which is normally present as a colonizer, it loves this organism. And then suddenly, it grows so much, you know, that overgrow and take over. So. You can increase it by having too much sugar, but you can decrease it by having low sugar, as well as proteins, really high quality proteins, plant-based or animal-based, especially fish, for example. Hmm. Those will really rebalance your fungi. I was talking with a guy called uh, Dr. Christian, or Christian Gonzalez, He's, I call him Christian, um, here and we he's a oncologist okay and we were all talking about the, the the personality of cancer and the yeah. the value of cancer and like what's the you know everything even like a mosquito mosquito i'm sure has some purpose they're a pain in the ass yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, so what is the, the the purpose of things that we just villainize like like a candida or all these kind yes. of bad things in our body yeah you know i think there is a good purpose for having those organisms. Mm. Like even candida, people, say they go freak out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, I have candida. Look, if you have candida at low level as a colonizer, it will cause no problem. What does colonizer mean? It means just live there peacefully, you know, trying to, you know, not causing, uh, not, not causing disease. Whereas when it become virulent, it invades. What so, would that be in a, in a human society, human culture? Who would candida be? What what uh, avatar of human being would it be? <laughs> uh, I think you have so many nasty people around. Yeah. If you give them power, then they are definitely gonna be uh, cause us all issues. But we need to treat them with respect and dignity. That's yeah. what prison systems in in yes. Europe apparently. I, I recently watched a documentary from Michael Moore, and that was one of the things he pointed out was that uh, I think it was maybe prisons in like Norway. I think it might have been. Yeah, and 
they really truly see it as a rehabilitation center and they re- and they truly respect the prisoners and they're like no you're not a convict you're just you know a person that made yeah. a mistake and you know it's like it's all about actually gaining a relationship with these people and bringing them back into society is there something like that with candida or should we just this destroy mean, it no no that's why i'm trying to to say candida at low level or colonizer as i said they just lives there peacefully trying to earn its living sort of yeah is good yeah. because it can help us to break down some food like you know complex carbohydrates for example candida can do a good job breaking it down when you break it down into sim- simpler byproducts guess what happened bacteria use that byproducts and produce other material for candida to consume and live in so it's very nice circle you are supporting the good organisms in your gut mm. okay the problem become is if they come get out of control yeah. they become like a mob right so our job if you want to code the prison is put them in prison try to control them and then teach them look let's be friends so yeah we need to integrate them in, in society let's integrate. Yeah, exactly exactly or else we'll have a breakout at yeah. some point Th- that's then the whole town's <laughs> fucked <laughs> <laughs> I like your <laughs> point of view. Yes, that's, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. What about the um, oh, what is the mycelial network in forests? Is it the mycorrhizal oh, network? It's my, like the nervous system, the internet of the forest. Yes, yes. I think the fungus in the forest, of course, without fungus, guess what's gonna happen? We are gonna be wading in all dead leaves and all yeah. dead organic. So having uh, and that's why like you see a lot of the time when we have vegetables at home you know you ha- take an orange or strawberries for example you guys in california love, love strawberries you a <laughs> <laughs> couple of days and guess what happened this fungus start to grow all over them the yeah. penicillium or sometimes aspergillus but particularly penicillium can damage these these fruits okay so the fungi if you look at it plays a good role but at the same time, it could cause in, uh, infection. So we need to teach it, listen, you need a house, let, let's give you a home, but don't overgrow. And that's why we have beneficial bacteria that keep it under control. It's like the police. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go take antibiotic and kill all the cops, guess what happened? Candida is going to grow. Yeah, I was I was reading about the the mycorrhizal network and how the the trees and various different plants they exchange nitrogen or yes. phosphorus and so it's all one big elaborate network. Yeah, you know, so aspen trees are very obvious. You know, they're, they're the largest organism. It's all yeah. just one aspen tree. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like it's there's kind of a similar thing, uh, just in forests in general, where they're exchanging information all the time. That's who I lo- I wrote an article, <clears throat> like you give very example with respect to the forest and how they work together. I wrote an article, opinion piece, it's in a journal called MBio, which is for the American Society for Microbiology, where I said bacteria and fungus have evolved strategically to work together. So if they work together towards our good, that's good. Yeah. Sometimes they work towards our benefit and theirs, sometimes only for their benefit and not ours. And then, you know, and then you have the other combination where they are completely uh, fighting or competing among each other. Yeah. Yeah. There's a term for it. It's eleolothopy or something like that, <laughs> where, where trees will send out pathogenic, uh, I think, fungus. I'm not sure what the exact term yeah, is, yeah. but to destroy other specific you species. Know, you can say molds. Most of the molds, like there are fungus you have yeast such as the best example, Saccharomyces, mm. uh, which is baker's yeast. The shape of it is like round. You know how the yeast looks like. Then you have the molds, which are what you see in an orange when it is eaten up or start to be, or strawberries as we go back by yeah. fungus. So it's all hyphae or filaments. It's like threads that start moving and covering the whole thing and breaking it down. Mm. Okay. And the last type of fungus is dermatophytes. These are the fungi that can cause infection in the hair, skin, and nail. Mm. So, yeah. Is there some relationship of the way that trees communicate or plants in general communicate in an ecosystem uh, via the, the mycelial network? Is there a similar relationship to humans communicating to each other via, via fungus? Is that a crazy question? Because uh, it's interesting. So, so what I was seeing with with the 
in relation to that that network exchange like um, you know the phosphorus or nitrogen or what have you so these large established trees will exchange these various different nutrients that the smaller saplings yeah. need yeah. Yeah. and i was thinking like god damn that's kind of what we do as a culture as well you see like the young person thing, coming yeah. up or like oh i'll exchange i'll give you money i'll give you yeah. education yeah. i'll kind of build yeah. you up i wonder if there's Go some there is the same consistent the same. operating system between there all is. of that yeah, there is in our body, for example, as I mentioned, bacteria and fungus work together. And guess what happens at the end of it? We benefit because we have more absorption of nutrients. We have more nutrients. So we are all, yeah. we help each other, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's where I would love it to stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of the other competitive uh, or, or even uh, anti-human. <laughs> what do you think of the nutritional value of uh, psilocybin or psychedelic mushrooms, fungus that kind of alter the mind. Is there any or is that just nonsense? You know, I really don't see a lot of research on this area. Yeah. I really don't see. Like, I, I follow that uh, because, of course, there is a great interest in it, in it now, but not much research has been done on this as far as I know. Mm. So I wouldn't know uh, well, what to tell you. But, yeah. but if you think about it. What about it, psychological effects? Psychological effect, I'm sure they have, because, you know, when you take this, it alters your uh, uh, perception, it calms you down, it, uh, uh, you become uh, maybe able to stand more of the pain. I know some people who are suffering and they take some of these uh, drugs, they feel much better, yeah. you know. So there are benefits. But what we really need to do is we need to do more studies on this so that we understand it better. And the good news is that the National Institute of Health is starting to issue what you call RFP, Request for Applications, where mm -hmm. they want people to study these phenomena. So I predict in the coming five, 10 years, we are gonna learn more, much more about this. Yeah, have you experienced, do you have any experiences with, with those forms of mushrooms? I, I did not. You uh, never did. I never did. All this study of fungi, I, you I never... I know, I know. I tell you, it's because of my background. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know Why? Because I was, of your background. I, I tell you, because of my... <laughs> <laughs> you seem so happy and like well, hip. I'm, I'm so happy. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need anything to make me That's happy. good. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy because, yeah. just because, you know, I am an <laughs> optimistic person. <laughs> good. <laughs> so... I tell you why, seriously, when I was a young boy, again, you know, when you are a little child, you learn so much and it all goes into your makeup. Yep. So when I was young, I remember in our area, you know, Lebanon, where I come from, has a hash, a lot of hash. Sure. So I used to see young people who are very strong and whatever, but then they get into it completely. Of course, not moderation, like now we are trying to use it just to control certain maybe symptoms, pain, like for example. Yeah. And when I used or to just watch to relax. That, or to relax. Yeah. yeah, I mean, stress is the yeah. number one leading cause of everything that sucks. No, no, no <laughs> doubt about it. That's one of, one of the things in the book, which I'm uh, erotic, is listen, it's not just diet. We need to manage our stress. Well, yeah, it's you one know? and the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah your stress. Yeah, yeah, because we, we, did the, we had a person who we did the gut testing and we saw that there is a huge imbalance. I mean, the worst you can get. We said, okay, we collect also questionnaires, what, what uh, this person eat. And we looked, she was eating this, the best food yeah. that is supposed to right. uh, rebalance your microbiome. But guess what? One of the uh, questions, are you stressed and what level? She was very stressed. Yep. So this is again what we talked about, the gut-brain access. Definitely stress is one of, one of the major factors. Stress, not sleeping well, not exercising, all this could contribute to the imbalance in your gut. Yeah, I think it's like with anything, it's not, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. It's not yeah. what you eat, it's what's your experience yeah. and intention and your yeah. filter on that food as you go into it. Yes, so I, so I didn't finish my story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I've obviously used too much psilocybin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're a happy guy. I am not against it. You are in contrast to what I used to see. Oh, good. That, that's why, that's, good. that's why I, I don't feel, <laughs> I, I, I don't try it. Okay, good. <laughs> that's simple. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Lebanon? 
You know, it was lo- Lebanon is a lovely place. You know, it's like California. I was coming now with Uber guy, yeah. and he was asking me, "Where are you from?" I say, "I'm from Ohio." He say, "No, no, where are you from?" I say, "I'm Lebanese." You know, and he asked me, "How is Lebanon?" It's a beautiful country. It's yeah. temperate climate, great food, as you know, Lebanese food. Yeah, as well as the people are nice people. Really, really. My dad, I tell you, my dad. My dad loved people. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's your background. He just, he was a good, a good guy, yeah. you know. So it was beautiful, and the Mediterranean is gorgeous. However, so, so now when I think of Lebanon, that's what I remember because you know I left Lebanon seventy four, seventy three actually, and Lebanon was good. Now, of course, it went uh, really down because of all the conflict in the Middle East. But Lebanon, as I grew uh, up, it was beautiful. We had pine forests. So when I was a kid, when we were studying for exams, you go to the pine forest and we studied all day because it's wow. cool and nice, you know? Yep. The mountains are beautiful. You know, between the sea and the mountain, it's less than a, an hour. I think that's the key to uh, a healthy biome of any sort just being out in the woods, being out in the pine forest, like you're doing it. That's exactly. That was the optimal supplement you ever could have ingested. <laughs> just freaking being out there. I, I, honest to God, that's what I say. And <laughs> as I mentioned, listen, go hike. Go enjoy it. Yeah, get a, dog. Get, get a dog. Get a goat. Get a goat. I, I, <laughs> I don't know about the goat. But <laughs> well, well, no, 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 I'm just joking. Eyes. I'm just uh, oh, cool. <laughs> joking. I think... You know, that's the other thing, which when I was growing up, we didn't have a dog. My granny had a dog, but uh, I didn't uh, know. Now I have a dog. It is the most pleasurable time. Like you look at this dog. He loves you. We, we Our dog called Prince. Mm. And he just loves you, this yeah. guy. And then I say to people, you know, honestly, you miss a lot not having an animal in your house. Yeah. Not only for companionship and how much they love you, also for your microbiome <laughs> right because people who live in farms you know people who live in farms what happened their kids are they have better microbiome than people who live in urban uh, you know in urban places also they have less energy uh, allergy sorry less allergy because they have better microbiome yeah what do you think of the diversity of biome microbiomes and like like the Hatsa tribesmen compared to like a person living in New York City for example yeah. um, I wonder if perhaps more is not always better like when you relate like you could think you could look at the Amazon and be like well there's so many species of stuff sure, there it must sure. be the best and then yeah. you go out into the desert and you're like oh there's like less yeah. species but then you look into the into the sand and you're like oh there's actually still quite a bit yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. is it just different does the your biome change depending upon where you live in the world you know there there was a study actually done where they compared people living in africa uh, uh kino pisao if i remember correctly this and compared to children these are children living in africa versus children who live in italy and they found that there are differences definitely in their microbiome so where you are geographically located could affect what your microbiome. Because also remember, you eat different things. People yeah. in Africa are not gonna eat the Western food we, <laughs> we yeah. eat. I wonder if one is better or if they're just different. Because I think sometimes we, we get attached to a thing, just like dietary dogmas. Like right now, you know, whatever, ketosis is cool, or you know, yeah, and that'll yeah, change yeah, yeah. in a year or something sure, like that. Sure. I That's wonder with the, with the biome, if perhaps, is there an ideal biome? Is it just? peace you want to just want to have peace in there or what's what's going on you know you know we actually we collected at part of the company which uh, i established called biome health b-i-o-h-m health we looked at 1000 people okay because we wanted to understand what is the normal or what is healthy okay we looked at these people 1000 we made sure they don't take any antibiotics any drugs they you know they have no health issues and we tried to compare them okay Interesting, what we found, we have three different groups, even though from our point of view, they are healthy. You know, they are yep. not, you know, based on the ex- exclusion criteria and inclusion criteria, which is the Human Microbiome Project had. And we found they fit into three different categories. Okay. And that's what I believe. I don't believe every one of us is so, is, is really the, only you have this microbiome. I think we share certain things together. Yeah. Okay. And to me, I I think you need the basics 
which are important. You need to look at things which you know. Like, for example, if you have protobacteria, protobacteria is known to be a red flag for inflammation. So if you ha have high level of protobacteria, then you need to reduce it. You look at people, if they have candida, if candida at certain level, as we mentioned before, it's fine. But if it goes up, we need to balance it. Mm -hmm. So it is not, and believe it or not, this morning I was reading an article about, you know, is this microbiome, a fad or is it something gonna continue and they found in general like this article their opinion that we really now we know what is there we know how they affect our health what's the difficulty is how can we reverse it how can we make it better we still need to have better uh, definition of what's normal exactly the question you asked me and to me I think it's gonna take a little bit of time more but in general, based on the studies that have been done, especially a very simple one with fecal transplant and, and, and C. diff, you know, they really are helping these people. So all in all, I think in the coming five to 10 years, if we have 30% of all the studies show to be true that they can help you, then we, have ch we will change medicine. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I think we are in the right track. Yeah. But we still need to learn more and more. Which probiotics work? Because <laughs> I hear lots yeah. of lots of things, and it's I feel like probiotics oftentimes are kind of like, you know, like a fish oil, or now like CBD is all the rage. And yeah, there's yeah, it's yeah. like you take it, you know, it's typically kind of expensive. You cross your fingers, you're like, okay, I I assume something great's happening. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, you ask me based on my research, I can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Based on my research, and I published that. And of course, for the sake of transparency, I started a company, you know, yeah. I co founded it's called Biome. So I, I want people to know this. We looked at the fact that we not only have bacteria, we have fungus as well. And because of this, we know that they can interact together and, and cause trouble. We wanted to devise or discover really uh, a probiotic that can deal with both bacteria and fungus. So now if you look in the market, most of the products, they only have bacteria like Lactobacillus bifidobacterium. In ours, we added a good yeast also, Saccharomyces boulardii. Mm. And there are studies to show that Saccharomyces boulardii does a number of things. Number one, studies prove that it can have antibiotic uh, associated diarrhea. It can help reverse that. Also, it, it is able to uh, what you call produce compounds, metabolites, antifungal, to keep candida under control. So based on this, we came out with this. The other thing which we designed in this probiotic is something which we didn't talk about yet. So I said when they are in our gut, these bad organisms, they work together. What they do, they form what we call digestive plaque or biofilm. It's like the plaque in our teeth. Mm. You know, every morning we, we brush our teeth to get rid of this, uh, you know, the plaque. Otherwise, we'll have infection down the line. Now, in the gut, they form biofilms. So we designed this probiotic that is able to disrupt this bad digestive plaque or biofilm. So to me, you need something, a probiotic, that can work against not only a couple of things. Number one, we needed to keep uh, the bad bad organisms, you know, the E. coli, the Seracia, and the Candida, as an example, down, and encourage the beneficial one. So we need something that have Lactobacillus as well, you know, yeah. because the, bene the beneficial organisms are good. Not o They keep the harmful organism under, the cont under control, but they also produce metabolites, which helps us with respect to, like, butyrate, short-chain fatty acids, and it showed that there is benefic benefit with respect to inflammation mm. as well as with respect to the gut-brain access. Which, you know. I, I wonder at what point is taking some type of um, probiotic, like a Band-Aid, as opposed to changing one's lifestyle or spending more time in the woods or getting a dog yeah. or yeah. licking a tree. Yeah. I really believe probiotic you take it if you are not doing <laughs> any of, of what you, you need mentioned. to lick a tree you really need to start you know adjust your lifestyle as you say the best go hike exercise yep. 
don't kill yourself, but do some exercise. Go walking. If you are at work, go up the stairs uh, instead of the elevator. So you need to do some exercise. You need to reduce your stress level, you know. And there are, you know, there are <laughs> many ways, as you said. Do you exercise and the bacteria? Is exercise, because I know bacteria has a circadian rhythm and you know, the microbiome, like it's like kind of... It's, it's kind of like a little person, but persons, ecosystems of ecosystems. It's, it's really what you are doing. You are encouraging the good one. Once, once you balance your gut, basically you are giving the good organisms better chance to survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in a way, you, you are doing that. Do you know what the system is with that? Like how, that, like by how exercise feeds the mycobiome? I think the exercise, first of all, what, if you think about it, when we exercise, we start losing some weight. Yeah. You know, we have less fat, and we know fat is gonna, it's not, not good. So you are providing less nutrients for the bad organisms, okay, which like, like they, they love, as, as I say, like obesity with the fat, high fat content, you know, they seem to help the growth of bacteria that are, pro-inflammatory, which means they cause inflammation. Yeah. So by getting rid of that and reducing it, you are going to uh, really select. It's like, as you say, you are watering and giving nutrients to the good bugs. Yeah. And that's how it works. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. You're saying exercise and, and, and hiking, being outside. Uh, yeah. Me me meditation. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I started to do yoga about... Uh, uh, now about one and a half years good man you know, i i really enjoy it i go sunday and uh for one and a half hours you know i love it what kind of yoga uh you know uh it's it's not uh heat yoga it's, okay yeah yeah there's a place called okay. atma center atma center where uh i forgot it's kind of thing probably yeah, yeah, i don't cool. know i mean that's great man uh, so i love it and the other thing i want to tell you i'm usually the only male there so i said to people you, we men should go and do this. It's crazy. All dudes we should really be cheerleaders. What are you doing playing football? I know. It's ridiculous. Just go and do it. Pick up, throw chicks in the air. Yeah. <laughs> if you're 16, there's no better job. I know. So you're getting naked with your buddies, slapping butts. <laughs> like, yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. <laughs> I, I, you just, <laughs> you need to relax, my friend. <laughs> so what is the, med how does, how does the, the meditation um, I know we kind of already talked about that, but is there any direct effect of how the meditation affects your internal I, biome? I really think so. I really think so. Because look, what you are doing in meditation, if you take, let's say, sit 15 minutes a day, yeah. okay? We are all the time thinking and running and like, honestly, it's unbelievable. I, at my age now, I work more than I ever uh, worked in my life. So you need to have a break. And to me, when you sit down and just try to focus on your breathing, try your mind will, set, you know, you are calming yourself. Yeah. And that in itself is going to help you. Yeah. You know, then? When you say self, what does self mean to you? Self really is your all, all, all your uh, makeup, you know, not just your body, your body and soul. Yeah. You know, and I really think with this, Exercise, for for example, it's going to help your body be in a better shape and this sort of thing. Whereas something like meditation or yoga is going to help your soul. Yeah. You know, so you need to have this yourself. You need to have like calm in your body. You know, so, sometimes because I, I, you know, I come to the U.S. I uh, left I lived in England. I lived all over the place, Malta and Kuwait and uh, Lebanon. And sometimes yourself, you are in, in conflict or with, with different ways of life. Yeah. Now I feel I'm quite happy with my way of life. Like I feel, no, you know, okay, about religion, I'm not very religious uh, guy. You know, I'm not religious actually. I feel if you are a good person, if you are helping others, if you are feeling good, that, and you are happy with it, that's what it is, you know? As long as you feel you are a human being. Like to me, I look at myself as a human being. Yeah. You know, and I I appreciate that all of our pe all the people are the same. Like I travel, you know, in my <laughs> my job, I'm lucky I travel all over the world. Whenever you go, people are the same. Yep. 
and you you will laugh at this because I come home and I tell my wife, oh, I was to Japan. They are so nice people. She said, you are crazy. Wherever you go, you come, you think they are good people. What's your filter on the world? Yeah. At any time, we can see, you know, the worst or the best. It's just I a matter of. I really agree. Like, yeah. like to me, I see them. You know, I went, I went before the fall of the Soviet Union. I went to visit Moscow to the Institute of Microbiology. I wanted to see what what's going on. You know. And the funny thing, it was the first day of school there. And in the television, at that time, they had black and white television in this hotel, and I looked, and all these little kids, they go to school in the first day with a rose to give their teacher. Mm. So to me, I thought, oh my God, this is the same. You yeah. know, the kids are all the same, irrespective of which country you are from, yeah. or culture you are from. So to me, I, I, I think I'm happy with myself, as defined, <laughs> yeah. because I feel, you know, I'm in a good place in, the, in my life. I, I really, uh, I like people. I, I feel we are all human beings. I, it doesn't mean like I, I agree with, with, I don't have to agree with them, but you know. Do you think that your perspective is in large part based off of the, the thoughts induced by your internal biome? Like you're the, 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 the fungus and the microorganisms that are living inside of you controlling your thoughts? Or? Be, believe me, it controls, at least we know it controls our mood and depression. <clears throat> yeah. Like there are studies which show like 60% of people with depression, you know, uh, they have uh, dysfunctional intestine, you know. And then they did a study, it's very interesting. The first uh, one uh, army uh, officer he was doing a study where he looked at the uh, gastric juices, you know, what's in the our intestinal uh, juice. And what, they f what he found that those people, depending on their, on their gastric, uh, gastric uh, constituents, which of course microbiome is a big part of it, they are affected in their mood. So definitely, if you are happy, you have good, good flora in you, you are gonna have uh, good I wonder if there was some way to quantify it uh, with, you know, say a hundred thousand people and their their moods. Which came first between the chicken or the egg race? Was it the bugs that created the mood, or did the mood create the bugs? If you had yeah, to guess, what yeah. do you what do you think? Or maybe you have a. a you know, this is remember I told you this article this morning. They said this morning a lot of the studies which we now we're showing the relation of the microbiome with a certain condition let's yeah. say depression or whatever, you know, uh, it's uh, like uh, association. What we need, we need a little bit more studies to show that there is correlation. One will cause the other. So the answer to your question, I think it's uh, work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, if you had to, you, you, somebody had a gun to your head, you're like, you, you got to choose. Would you be able to? 51%, 49%, which would you, your guess be? Or is there no way to guess? I think it's difficult, it's just but the at same, the same maybe time, it's just the same thing. Yeah, it's There's a, no know, separation. As it's we said, like it's bidirectional. If yeah. one is uh, bad, the other is uh, will be bad. If both of them are good, so it's really uh, harmony, harmony yeah. and uh, balance. Yeah. Yeah. What about colonics? Are they jacking people up, or are they good? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to be. Uh, how, how would a person go in? So, is is it necessary with creating more harmony in your system? Is it necessary to go in and weed out the uh, the the kind of like bad bugs? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you can imagine if you have imbalance and you have gastric issues, you are constipated, you are bloating, you are, you know bloated, and yeah. you're not gonna be a happy camper. Yeah. So it's good. That will be one step towards giving you overall wellness. Yeah, are we using like cloves or what are we doing? And how do we, how are we getting the bad bugs out? Well, there are very good diet diet diets which we can follow. Yeah. Okay, our studies and this uh, book which I called uh, Total Gut Balance, I selected diet as well as lifestyle that hopefully it's gonna rebalance your gut. Okay, mm -hmm. in it, what I think we do. Like the, the, the premise is, number one, we need to starve the bad organisms. Right. In this case, let's say candida, okay? Number two, 
is we need to encourage the good ones. We need more saccharomyces because those saccharomyces are very good. Mm. Also, you need to feed the good bacteria because they are the policemen. Remember, if they are, their number is less, then we are going to have riots. So it's very important to give them, for example, prebiotic or fiber because that they love it. Okay. And they love it. And once they, they grow, this will be uh, very, very helpful. Also, we need something so that we interrupt or inhibit the biofilm or the digestive uh, uh, plaque, which I talked to you about. We need to destroy it. And we can use garlic, for example, well, apple vinegar cider. <laughs> you have uh, a lot of uh, polyphenols, very good uh, for that. Uh, we, we actually, uh, apart from the food which we describe, also we did uh, this probiotic which uh, I mentioned to you, the Biome probiotic. We just published a paper in April of this year where we showed it is able to break that digestive plaque. Not only we have in it these uh, um, probiotic strains, it also has an enzyme with anti-biofilm activity or anti-digestive plaque. Mm. So if you, if you do that, then your overall harmony in your gut is going to help you with your weight, is going to increase your energy, and of course, reduce your inflammation. And then is it necessary to then reseed the the biome after you're you're doing the weeding i think if you if, uh, it does not hurt at all if you reseed to me pe like people ask me oh should we just take probiotic and forget no i think i would like to balance it with diet yeah and lifestyle but sometimes we all go off the cliff you know uh, you can use probiotic. If you feel you have imbalance and you want to have some beneficial organism, yes, use it because it will help you. But it, it shouldn't be the only way. I think your way is through eating well to encourage the good bug and discourage the bad ones and also uh, get rid of all these biofilms in your gut. Then you should be fine. Hmm. What's inspirational for you these days? What's inspirational is when people call me and they say, you know, we used uh, this uh, product and it worked. It really makes me very happy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, because you say, because, you know, I'm a scientist, okay? I'm a professor. What the hell do I know? <laughs> so as a professor, you spend all your life doing research and sometimes it never translates into something helpful. Yeah. So when you have something and it really shows that it works, it makes you very happy. Yeah. It is not just about the money. It's about, oh my God, what I am doing, I'm helping people. And this is what, what makes me happy. What are some of the, the prebiotic fibers and different foods that we can be naturally eating? Yeah, I think uh, legumes, for example, different types of beans is uh, very good. You know, really, whatever, uh, lentils, for example. Do we got to steam them or pressure cook them or something like that? What do you think about the other Dr. G's perspectives on lectins and all that stuff, the plant paradox guy? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think you, you, you really. Uh, I mean, the way I, li I like to do it is just uh, you cook them. You basically not necessarily steam them. You just uh, do like we do lentil soup, for example. Yeah. You know, that's a good way to do it. I think that's that should be really uh, very helpful. You, you also could have another thing which I want to talk uh, about is about resistant starch. Yeah. This is really very important because people say, oh, don't eat carbohydrates. Either they go all the way and they eat so much car carbs, or they said, okay, no carb. I think it is not, carbs are not bad, provided you select the right ones, yeah. okay? You don't need sugars or sugar sweeteners, for example. This is not good. I'll okay? have my editors cut out that part where you yeah. said carbs aren't bad. Yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you you need to take what you call resistant starch. Okay. What is, you are asking? What the hell is a resistant starch? Yeah. You can find it in sweet potatoes. You can find it in bananas, unripened, not too much. Like people take the banana and leave it for two weeks, and then it becomes black. This is not good because a lot of these complex car. What they do, broken down. They, they, they broken down, exactly, to simpler one. Then they are not the right. So why I'm saying resistant starch? Because we, in our intestine, cannot break them down. Hmm. 
So they go through your intestine to the colon where all these microbiota is, microbiome there, and what do they do? They love it, the beneficial uh, mm. organism, they love it. They start to break it down, and of course by breaking down, they are, in, uh, first of all, increase in number, so they are more more policemen <laughs> there to keep the bad bugs, but also they start to produce these metabolites which can help us with our inflammation and this sort of thing. So oat is very good. I started to eat steel cut oat, you know, which is, I buy the Irish one. <laughs> and uh, these are all very beneficial from that point of view. What about potatoes, white potatoes? What's the deal with if you refrigerate them, apparently, then yeah. it's okay? Yeah. You, you know, I think potatoes, are, again, have a bad, bad rap. You know what's the secret? The secret is moderation. Yeah, right. Like people, if you start, sit down and you, you can supersize it or something, you know, like people do. do like That's always shocked me when people supervise the drink or supervise the uh, fries. Or, I think if you have baked potatoes, I don't think there is any any harm in it. It's it's quite good. Yeah. But don't over, overeat. I think it's interesting. The, it's easy in my mind to think of nutrition, you know, the carbs or the proteins or whatnot yeah. to be in the food and whatever you put into your body. Okay, cool. I got 70 grams of yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's actually, it's the process. It's the level of assimilation that your internal bugs are able to, exactly. to, uh, to process translate yeah. that and process yeah. that into yeah. something that your body can use. That's why, like I said, we need carb. We need proteins, you know, for protein for growth and this sort of, we need it. We need also fats. It's just what type of this. Yeah. You need to be more selective. If you are selective, for example, you need uh, fat, okay? Don't take saturated fat. Take something mono, mono uh, uh, unsaturated or polyunsaturated, like you can see in fish, for example, okay? In some nuts, there are good oil. The plant-based fat is much better than animal-based fat. And there are studies to show that they compared uh, animals eating uh, plant-based uh, fats versus uh, meat-based, and definitely they had more imbalance in the meat-based. Hmm. So you can have this, but be selective. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I I think. Are you do, so you lean more towards plant-based diet then? Plant-based di plants plant-based diet. Uh, I think it's good for proteins and this sort of thing. But I think you should you can have also animal animal. Uh, what do you think of carnivore diet? Carnivore, I think. Completely carnivore, you mean? Yeah, or, that's a thing now. No, I don't think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because what what you're doing, you are not, you are just uh, eating this meat and high 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 fat meat, and guess what you're doing? You are encouraging what you call bile loving or bile tolerant microbes, and these microbes are pro-inflammatory. They cause more inflammation. Yeah. So. It doesn't make sense. And you are not giving in this diet any fibers or, for that matter, resistant starch to encourage the good organism. So we need to encourage the good. It's not just, uh, you know, take one category or another. You really need to have different, but be selective. Yeah. Is fasting, do you think that's like... Um What's the effect that fasting has on the microbiome or mycobiome? I think fasting, remember I come from Lebanon, so people fast a lot. Yeah. But like I want to give you a laugh then, okay? People fast from sunrise to sunset. And then in the evening, they gorge themselves. Yeah. So I don't think this is a good way of fasting, you yeah. know? Uh, because basically the day changed into night and the night changed into day. It doesn't matter then, you know? Right. So to me, fasting is good. I think it will give you a bit of relaxation uh, in addition to psychological yeah, psychological and introspection. Benefit. Yeah, I think that's a huge part that we don't talk yeah. about with it. Yes, no doubt about it. This is a big part of it, by the way. In our culture, when you are fasting, you feel hungry. I yeah. mean, definitely, I remember when I was young, I used to fast and... The first three days, they are terrible yeah. because your body is getting used. You are eating uh, all the time, and now suddenly you don't eat from sunrise to sunset. This will give you a perspective about poor people who don't have food. Yeah. You start to appreciate it more. You know? So it is psychological as well as uh, beneficial to your health. Yeah. I kind of have a feeling all of nutrition is psychological as, far, as well as... Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, like I, I wonder, oftentimes the stuff that we 
eat when we're in the grocery store, I think that your level of self-worth and yeah. you know, just how much you value yeah. your health, yeah. like that's the root of what dictates Dictate. what you reach out for. Yes, exactly. You know, we put so much emphasis on just like, that's the thing. But it's like, I think there's a whole like mycorrhizal network exactly. below. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I said, look, it's, you should be flexible. You know, yeah. flexible and able to able to really accommodate other things. It's not just one thing or the other. Like we are, we all tend to be, as you say, we go to extremes. Yeah. Extreme is not the way. Yeah. I think in all our life, for more than one thing, you really need to have some balance. Yeah. You know, and that that's how. My last thing I'm curious about is there any update on the last I heard the like ninety percent of our the bacteria in our body is that of some other species than what would be considered human DNA. I think I'm saying that wrong. Like 10% of human is human and then 90% oh, is all this oh, other yes, bacteria yes. stuff. But then they I heard like, oh, it's I, actually not really no, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what, what they used to say is that we really basically are humans, but within us we have this microorganism or microbiota. Yeah. And these microbiota, when you look cell to cell in number, how many cells our body is made with respect to how many bacterial cells are there and fungal cell, we used to think we have 10 times more microbes than what our human cell or host cell. In fact, then most, most recently, as you said, it revised and it's about the same. You yeah. know, it's about the same. Mm. I mean, definitely when you look at the uh, DNA or the genomes, the genes in all those organisms, they will be much more than the genes which we which we have. Yeah. But not a number. How does one differentiate between? Because to me that just is like okay, cool. Well, that's just all human. You know, how does one differentiate? This is human DNA, and this is some other alien bacteria. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, that's what we do in the sequencing: is we take the DNA, and when you extract the DNA, you have both. Like, let's say you. T- what people do, they take stool sample or fecal sample, okay? Yeah. And then they get the DNA from that and then they analyze it. So what you do to try to differentiate it, you start, uh, try to use what you call segments of the DNA that is only present in the bacteria, mm. not present in us, okay, mm. like 16S. For fungus, we use ITS, another region which is specific to fungus. So when you do your sequencing, you look for these things, and that's what will tell you is different. Whereas if you want to look at humans, it's going to be different marker, okay, or a primer. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for teaching me, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate honestly, it. Honestly, I enjoyed it so much. Good. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. uh, where do people go from here? Where's, where people should go, go for the book? Or go yeah. for the, what, what do we do? Well, the book, it's, to, uh, it's called uh, Total Gut Health. Now it's already in Amazon, uh, pre-order. It's going to come out in December 24th. That's when my book comes out. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Send me, send me. You have to buy two books. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, that's one. And also, if you need more information about the diet and this sort of thing, this is Dr. Microbiome, drmicrobiome.com. Cool. If you want to know about the uh, biome probiotic and about the gut testing, then biome health.com b-i-o-h-m health.com one word cool and uh, listen it's great talking to you I love it man well everybody needs to go pre-order uh, say your, the name yeah. of your book uh, uh, Total Gut Balance Total Gut Balance and then once you pre-order that then pre-order the Align Method of course yeah. as well <laughs> they'll, they'll arrive yes. with the same freaking of day of course that's very oh, exciting that I really Thanks. am going to look at that <laughs> I didn't know you <laughs> see this Interview is all a surprise. <laughs> I didn't know I'm going to have a, a, an interview in a uh, sauna. In the sauna. Which, Close which off. Which I Wear love. shorts. Which I love. And then all my, uh, I came dressed as if I'm going to give a lecture. And okay. now I look at the, oh, I wanted yeah. to take a picture. Yeah, we don't here. do. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll get a photo of a shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really and we got the tea. It. We're going old oh, school yes. Lebanese <laughs> hammam style. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Over now. Pow. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks. That really was fun. Good. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. I want to present y'all with a fun opportunity of starting a program that I created called the Align Method Online Program that focuses on unwinding the unsightly patterns of staring into technology, essentially. So forward head posture, rolled forward shoulders, hyperkyphotic spine, disengaged glutes, knees collapsing in. If there's collapse in any level in the body, it will trickle up and down through the rest of the system. That program focuses on unwinding those things, giving you self-care
care practices, movement practices, and lifestyle adjustments, very subtle ones, that will give you all more flexibility, more strength, more confidence, more energy, all the good things. Um, and you can start the first week absolutely free and just go to alignpodcast.com slash align method, A-L-I-G-N method. Along with that guy, you will receive the Align Band, which is a heavy-duty resistance band with a door anchor. And that also comes with its own online program that is free with that thing. Go to alignband.com and start that program for free. Um, I think that's it. I so greatly appreciate you guys listening to this conversation. So greatly appreciate reviews on iTunes, sharing uh, on the Instagrams or the Facebooks or wherever you do your shares. Uh, This program goes on lives on because of y'all so um it doesn't go unnoticed thank you for listening thank you for views thanks for joining your life enjoy